Hello, John. Hey, how thanks are you? for joining us. Uh, so we've got 20 minutes, and I and um, oh, and my button's not done. And the, I think the, where I'd like to spend most of the time is getting your opinion on the new Yahoo logo. Um, <laughs> I think it's got the wrong color. I think if they'd pick maybe green. Yeah. And what about the font? Do you think it's the wrong font? I'm not qualified to comment. No. So I'm just kidding. I'd like to talk about a few other things as well. Uh, what kind of big problems are you working on right now? What are you trying to solve, both near term and long term? So I think the uh, largest new opportunities in technology are in really three areas. Um, the first is healthcare. This is the largest, most second most screwed up part of the American economy. Right. Two point six trillion dollars in our country alone, and everybody agrees about thirty percent of it is wasted. Yep. And that's because we're paying insurance companies are telling doctors what to do, and they're paying the doctors per procedure. And if instead of paying what's called fee for service, we put the doctors in charge and paid them for value, I think we could transform that part of the economy. And technology has a lot to do with it. You know, just four or five years ago, there was more technology in the average Safeway store yeah. than in a physician's office because all none of the medical records were in the cloud. Yeah. And now over half of physicians are using uh, medical record system and moving up the cost. So that's number one. Uh, number can two, I, number two. Did I just interrupt? Oh, yeah. Does Obamacare, we can come back to it if you like, but does Obamacare help or hurt that situation? Helps enormously. Okay. All right. We can come back to it if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second is education. Education costs too much and it's not available to enough people. And a lot of technology uh, uh, executives and entrepreneurs have been working in this field for a long time. Remember when Bill Gates said he was going to put a computer in every library? And, and basically, we haven't made much progress until honestly well we have computers in every library now <laughs> yeah, what? but that didn't solve the problem we don't see educational achievement improving yep and and technology hasn't been at the heart of this i mean at the heart of it is i think changing the way we teach and empowering teachers getting better people into that profession so you see two examples now of things that are getting scaled very rapidly one is khan academy for elementary students and the other is the kind of coursera udacity yeah. MOOCs, massively online open curricula. Third area. Wait, can I jump in? Yeah. I, I saw yesterday, it's not something I fall, but it's something like a trillion dollars in student debt now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's right, but it was, I, thought, I thought it was. Do you, do you actually think that talented young people should consider not going to college at this point because of that, or do you think that they should still go to college if they have the opportunity to? I think they should go to college if they have the opportunity yeah. to. Okay. You think college should be cheaper? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, third area yeah. where, uh, which we take for granted, is uh, continuing to push forward uh, Moore's law. I think Moore's law is going to run out of steam here in the next four to six years, and we've just assumed we've all benefited from Moore's law doubling every two years. That's 40% yeah. improvement per year. And at some point, you can only get the transistor so small. So we have an initiative called- Wait, wait, you think we have four to six years left? Before the cost of a new fab facility. Yeah. You, well, at some point, you can't get the atoms. You can't, you don't have enough atoms yeah. to store the state. But there's a second Moore's law that's not as well known, yeah. besides the doubling, and that is that the price of, a, of, a, of the next generation fab facility is going up at more than Moore's Law. So the, the most recent new fab from Intel costs $7 billion. It's crazy, it's yeah. crazy expensive. Yeah. So there's an initiative at Kleiner led by Wen Shea called Low Power Everywhere. And, and it takes the technologies that are essential for this. The battery, we've seen only marginal improvement in batteries. Yeah. The displays, which is where most of the power is wasted. If, if we peeled one of these apart, you'd see underneath it a very bright white backlight, and then we filter away most of that energy in the display. So 90% of the energy in the display is wasted. You never see it. And there's a breakthrough in displays that's going to turn that number around. And, and then there's the memory and the processing power. So, Can we talk about that breakthrough in displays? Who's doing yeah. that? A company called Luxview, L-U-X-V-U-E. And in, instead of using a... I'm guessing you're an investor in that company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, 
and I'm not running a commercial for it because nobody here is going to buy displays in a piece. Yeah. But it will all benefit from this if it scales the way I think it will. So instead of having a bright white light and then filtering away the colors you don't want, at every pixel, it puts down two red, two green, two blue, directly emissive LEDs. Now, why two? Right. Well, if one fails, you want the other one to work because you, you need the whole screen to work. And uh, this will deliver uh, nine times better brightness. Wow. You'll see them outdoors uh, with lower battery requirements. Yeah. Yeah, big deal. Yeah. Also, they can be on curved substrates. So if somebody was going to make a really great watch, you yeah. might, might want to use it there. OK. Uh, so that's a lot. Uh, what about near term? What are you working on near term? So uh, near term, most of my activity in that of the partnership is in uh, what I've called social local mobile. You know, this yeah. whole tsunami. So thing. low mo. So yeah. low mo. And in and around the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. So what are, what are some of your most recent investments and activities in that well, personally? I'm, my, 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 yeah. And, and I am one of eight partners, you know, yeah. who are pushing investments forward there. But the most recent investment I made was in my fitness pal, yep. which uh, is a great company that was bootstrapped by two brothers, and they built a profitable business on their own savings. Yeah. And now with the advent of these smart watches and, and these uh, kind of up bands, yeah. they have uh, 45 million users around the world, the biggest database of foods and weight. And, and their users last year lost 100 million pounds. So, wow. That, not, not, not any other ventures I know of. Can How much did they gain back, though? <laughs> well, the retention and the churn is a really interesting part of the business. And, and, and the subscribers peak uh, right around New Year's as people yeah. you know, sign up for the new resolutions. But it works. And it integrates, it, 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 it talks to my Withing scale, and it, it talks, we'll soon talk yeah. to my Strava and all that. So it becomes a dashboard, really, for, for your health. Yeah. And uh, great. What else? You asked, so what else? Yeah. Uh, right before that, I joined the board of Zynga, and I'm really impressed with Don Mantrick. It's a public yeah. company, so I can't say very much about what's going on but there. Is he the right guy to sort of counter Mark Pincus or? Well, Mark, or any... Mark recruited him. Yeah. Mark, Mark led this effort. And, you know, Mark is this brilliant, driven, creative entrepreneur. And yeah. I'm not what I'm telling you is in the public record. When Don joined Microsoft, the Xbox was losing a lot of money, yeah. like more than a billion dollars. Yeah. And in three years, they turned that around so that it's making more than a billion dollars of revenue. How many board meetings have you been in with the three of them? A few? I've been in three board meetings and maybe a, a half dozen other meetings. And has, has Mark, well, not has he, how many times has Mark yelled at him? I've never seen Mark yell. So he's, he's like, I mean, he's, he is he is keeping his cool and realizing that he's not the CEO anymore. He, he, he loves working with Don Mantrak. Hmm, okay. And, and, and we need both of them. So you think you're bullish on Zynga? Uh, yeah, I think I can say that. Yeah. I, uh, what we got to do is we got to get Zynga's stock price to where God intended it to be. I love when you say stuff like that. And what, what is the stock price that, that God intends Zynga to be at? Well, he's got a floor. I'd like yeah. to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about up there. What is it? So uh, up there is a stealth new cloud company uh, whose uh, leaders include uh, Jean Bertrand Surlet, who uh, did all the Mac OS works for Steve Jobs. Yeah. And uh, I, I can't say much more about what they're doing now. But can you say anything more about it? It's an uh, it's an awesome team, and they're completely rethinking a fundamental capability of the yeah. cloud to optimize it for mobile. Okay, and, and it, that's what God wants them to be doing? <laughs> I haven't checked in with God on that one. <laughs> uh, Flipboard, you were on a Flipboard board meeting, I think, when I walked up to you this morning. Dri driving up here. And, and that's doing well. Really well. They've got yeah. like 85 million users right now, uh, over, yeah. over a million people creating their own magazines. Yeah. Almost three million magazines have been created. As you know, TechCrunch has a Flipboard magazine yeah. at the end of every day. You put video in there, you can images, anything from yeah. the web. So the way I think of Flipboard, this come across as a commercial, but no. let me say this. If you do not have Flipboard on your smartphone, 
If you do not have it on your iPad, you really should put it on there. It's, it's just a beautiful example of how to do user interface and design well. But, but the, the, way, the way they think of it is the web is huge and on average uninteresting. Yeah. And so what Flipboard is, is it's the curated web. It's yeah. curated by a combination. Well, let's just, how many people out, in here use Flipboard already? I mean, I bet it's, uh, you know, how many people have at least tried it? I think this audience, well. How many have it on your smartphone? How many people are paying no it. attention whatsoever? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's the curated web because yeah. it relies on both algorithms, their own editors, sure. but yeah. most importantly, their users to uh, put together the really great stuff. Yeah, but you're literally preaching to the choir, I think, at least right. for me. But Peace. So the digital stuff, I mean, all these are digital companies, yeah. the, the last few. So how much of your time is spent on near-term digital opportunities and how much is spent on longer-term uh, issues with, um, with, what do we talk about? With, uh, oh, education, healthcare, energy, and stuff like that. I haven't really thought of that. The majority of my time is on digital, but that includes yeah. uh, near term and longer term. Yeah. And the second largest commitment of my time is around really disruptive energy innovation. Yeah. And, and the, the science is what's making that so appealing. If, if you get it to work right, the markets are enormous. When you talk about energy, you're talking about creation, transportation, or storage, or all three? All three. All yeah. three in particular. And where are the biggest opportunities over the next decade, do you think? I think the single most disruptive thing that could be done, the game changer, would be to, instead of have batteries improve one or two percent per year, yeah. would be to triple a 300 percent improvement in batteries. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we've got a venture working on that. So if, if you can get uh, all batteries cost whatever they weigh. That's the first rule, because they're all made of basically common yeah. stuff. So if you can find a way to double or triple the energy density of a battery, uh, what happens? You need less stuff yeah. to make the same energy. It weighs a lot less, so if you're putting it in the car, you've got to haul less of it around. And you know, my, my dream is we can make electric vehicles as cheap or cheaper than internal combustion. Do you, do you see any opportunities here to really do this? Because we, you know, we've been talking about battery capacity for 30 years, so, yeah. or at least 20, uh, with the first laptops. So, is there is this time? Yeah. Is it going to be for real? I, I see a team that's done it in the lab. Now, between yeah. the lab and volume production, yeah. is, is what you, we see in your lab. There. Like you have a you have Not people working in my there? lab, but their lab. Okay. Have you, have you taken... I don't uh, have a battery lab at home. <laughs> have you... Uh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it's, like, right next to the bowling alley. But what, how... Uh, are you, have you invested in this company? Yes. Wow. Uh, okay. Um, Mary, I'm getting a question from the audience. Oh, what is the company called? Mm, it's Stealth. Stealth. <laughs> yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who owns Stealth.com? <laughs> <laughs> Probably you. Uh, so Mary Meeker's USA Inc. comes out periodically, and it's just so depressing. Um, it talks about how we're essentially, not essentially, we're basically bankrupt as a nation. Um, it, it, what's going on with that? I mean, are we going to make it? Because we're, there's a oh, lot I'm of very, I'm, and, I'm very optimistic about America. That we're going to make it as that a country? we're going to make it. Yeah, make how? It. What do we need Mary, to focus on? Mary's report, if you guys haven't seen it, it's online at, at kpcb.com. Just at the time she joined us, which I think was only a couple years ago, yeah. she had started a project at Morgan Stanley. It's and the idea, like two of them now for you. Yeah. Yeah. She, but the idea was let's look at the U.S. government as if it was a business. Yeah. So we'll build a balance sheet with assets and liabilities. We'll look at government services as if they're product lines. Yeah. What are we spending on healthcare? What does it cost? And yeah. so forth. And just to cut to the chase, uh, her conclusion was we're bankrupt. That's assuming you give no value to national parks in Mount Rushmore. Right. Which, of course, really are very valuable. Right. But uh, the other interesting conclusion is no matter how much you cut expenditures or you raise taxes, uh, you're not going to get there unless we get the economy to grow. So growing the economy and growing it faster is a way bigger thing than raising yeah. taxes or cutting expenses. And, and then that goes to the question, how do you make an economy grow? How do you generate jobs? Yeah. How do you do, how, how do you And you're working the on that. Well, the entrepreneurs I back, yeah. we back are doing that. Right. 
That's our job. The companies we've backed have generated, I, I think, around 350,000 jobs yeah. in the period of time we've been investing. And that's good. What's, this, what's going on at Kleiner in general? What's, this, what's sort of the state of the union of Kleiner? Right yeah. Now? So uh, we're super busy, uh, super aggressive. I think in the last two years we've made uh, 50 or so digital investments, yeah. 30 in consumer, 20 in enterprise. Uh, security, no surprise, is a really yeah. hot area. And my partner, Ted Schlein, I think is the leading security investor. Uh, the, he'll tell you, well, he was on a panel yesterday, but yeah. the whole security paradigm is, is moving away from signature tracking of viruses after they're in your machine yeah. to... Uh, Towards defending yourself from the government. No, well, no, no, no. It, this is irrespective of where yeah. security threat comes comes from. I think focus primarily on data security. Yeah, from the government. Yeah, but I, I want to go back to Kleiner. So we got. You're a, not biting on that segue at all, are you? So go ahead. Particularly the segue part. So, <laughs> oh. so, so, so the uh, the the stuff going on is we got a very active investing effort around the connected home. Yeah. And I think the second screen in the home is, is very much up for grabs. Yeah. Bing Gordon is backing a team that I think is going to reinvent second screen for television. What company is that? Uh, Stealth? No, its name is Network, N3TWORK. Yeah. It's guys who founded NG Moco. Yeah. Uh, Chihua Chen has sponsored an investment in uh, dealing with a, a college debt, of all things, yeah. and Randy's working on a project for personal mobile financial services. Yeah. We made a major new investment in digital health and electronic medical records that I hope we can announce soon. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on. A lot's going on. Trey Vassala sponsored an investment, Drop Camp, and Mary Meeker is just everywhere. What? Do you mind if we talk about the NSA for a couple of minutes? No. Because I get the feeling that we have divergent or possibly divergent opinions on that. So I'm concerned um, that uh, the government is looking at as much data as it is. I'm concerned about the fact that Silicon Valley seems to be complying with it, um, although that's arguable. Uh, I'm mostly concerned with how mass populations might react to knowing that they're being surveilled by the government and how that can drive countries crazy. Do you, have, are you, do you share these concerns? Are you less concerned? Well, I'm concerned about this. This is a this is a top issue. Yeah. It's being highly debated. You know, I, my perspective on this, uh, Michael, is that uh, today's September 11th. Yeah. You know, and I'm a, I like to think of myself as a sort of patriotic, red-blooded American who believes in technology executives, all citizens being involved in, in our government. And I, I think this is being debated. I know it's happening. Obama's appointed. A special commission. I've been in meetings with the CEOs of, of uh, Yahoo and Facebook and yeah. Google and Microsoft. I'm uh, a member of this TechNet organization, yeah. which before this news broke was advocating that we revise and update the electronic privacy laws that are in the country. Yeah. And, and uh, it's a serious and really important issue. I think uh, with the appropriate safeguards, now I'm speaking as a person mm -hmm. or a citizen, I'm comfortable with people knowing the to and from of my phone calls. Yeah. I'm comfortable with people knowing, with the appropriate safeguards, where my email has been sent or not. Yeah. I believe ever since I started using a credit card, sure. my privacy is in the hands of someone else. They know where I've been, what I bought, from who, the price, and all that kind of stuff. And that's a choice I'm making. It, it, it's a trade-off. Uh, I, I think we've got to have an, an independent and rigorous judicial oversight of the executive authority. I think left unchecked, the bureaucrats and the executive authorities will certainly go too far. And I think it was stunning this week to see Google and Microsoft, who hardly ever agree on everything, be joined by Yahoo and Amazon, I think, was in that mix, to sue that Oh, court. Facebook. Yeah. Oh, Facebook yeah. in that mix. Sorry, not Amazon. To, to sue the, the federal government to insist on more disclosure of what's going yeah. on here. Well, they're petitioning the FISA court. I mean, I don't, yeah, but I, don't I think know it's in the form of a suit yeah. that's brought before that court. Do you, I mean, the way I see it in a very simplified way, and, I, and, I, and, I, and it's easy for me to do this, is our government creates enemies through our foreign policy. We then have the NSA to protect us from these created enemies. 
and we end up in a situation that's far worse than if we just sort of chilled out a little bit like Switzerland does. And it, it, why not just abolish the NSA? I assume that you'd be in favor of that, right? No, I'm not in favor of abolishing <laughs> the NSA. But I also don't agree with the premise that the government creates enemies for our country. I yeah. think America's standing in the world Did now. Bush? Uh, I, I think America's standing in the world was at an all-time low during yeah. the Bush administration. And I think with the election of o Obama, regardless of who I supported, yeah. the data will show that America's standing in the world uh, stepped up. All right, and that's well, good. All right, I appreciate your outlook on this. Yeah. And thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, John. Yeah.